10. I guess I'll just start if you're recording. So three, two, one. <clears throat> All right. Greetings everybody to one to one more installment of Burrows. This is Lynn and Otter back at you again to provide you with uh, a conclusion or at least a continuation to what happened to where we left off last time. It was pretty intense and uh, <laughs> you guys can tell me in the comments if that uh, content warning was me just being a pansy or not, but I don't know. I could literally hear the bones breaking in that one scene, so Ken's clearly got some troubles and we're gonna go ahead and try and hopefully figure out just what the heck is wrong with him. Uh, it, with with kindness, with kindness, we'll be we'll be kind and gentle. Got my alarm set up. And a, and a quick little side note: if hopefully the, this audio sounds a little bit better, it's because I am recording in an actual professional style studio of sorts. <laughs> a big thanks to my friend here who's providing it. Uh, we'll see how this works. I mean, this is just something I'm experimenting with to do some of my other videos too uh, for the other channels, the uh, video essay one. And so you'll see that video uploaded hopefully sometime within the next couple of days. But uh, yeah, I, I probably won't be here for every single video, but this is just me experimenting with, you know, how good the audio could be if I try some different things. Maybe I'll get a better setup at my house and such. But anyway, we're going to continue with Burrows. Let me go ahead and load where we are now. And black screen. All right. And so first thing we do is see this lady. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what to do for her. She sounds like, she looks like a, I don't know, like a, what you call it, a, a lady from the 20s. Well, that was dramatic. I have no idea what I'm looking at, by the way. <laughs> I, I readjust my ensemble, checking my reflection in the dark glass of the window. Ah, John, who's John? Oh, I think this is a, uh, a flashback to Gray's childhood. Okay, <clears throat> I have no idea what to do for his voice. Um... Awfully bold of the little ruffian to call me a clown when his par paramour fits those oversized shoes far better. The whole ordeal has left me quite vexed, to be honest. Ah, damn it all. Good lord, this place is unsightly. <laughs> Looks like I'll have to perform an impromptu inspection of the property. I, whose voice am I doing? Am I, am I this lady? Hmm. <clears throat> I could, I could use some entertainment. I'm gonna just do my voice until I figure out who I'm speaking as. Don't get me wrong, I'm not the type of landlord who would, who would rifle through my tenant's personal belongings. However, that underprivileged marsupial owes me three months' rent. And I have become quite savvy at guessing where people tend to hide their valuables. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm reading as this person here. And I don't think this is a girl, I think this is a guy. Gray mentioned earlier that he had a, a landlord that he was willing to top to skip next month's rent, if that's uh, what that was all about. Anywho. Alright, I'm assuming this person's name is John. <clears throat> Alright, first things first, the couch. If you could even call this thing a couch anymore. I've seen sacks of flour with more volume. The possum-shaped dent across its length suggests the nature of the relationship has gone south. Ouch. Ah, good for you, girl. Keep the bed. All right, now for the dirty work. Uh, I'll need to remove my gloves for this one. I don't want any parasites hitching a ride of my delicates. Hmm. Nothing to write home about. I'll bet Simone was looking for this hairpin, though. I'll leave it on the coffee table for her. She's never been short on rent. She's never been short on rent. Not to mention her shows bring in a ton of customers at, at La Chaise Bleu. I pay her, she pays me. Simple. Uh, the mutt breaks his back doing odd jobs and working at the rail yard to pay for, for his shack, despite regularly squatting here. Uh, anyway, what's next? The kitchen? Hmm. No, I doubt they're the type to hide family heirlooms in a cookie jar. That leaves the bedroom. Well, at least I can return the hoys hoisiery? Hosiery? At least I can return the hosiery I borrowed from Sim. Ma'am, I adore you, but your largest and most glaring flaw was keeping your ex-lover around. Now I'm given no choice but to meddle. Oh, how I tried to warn her, taking in the pathetic street, that pathetic street urchin, trying, the, trying to write what was wrong. 
Uh, but John, she said, this must be fate. He's, fin he's finally come back to me after all these years. Uh, listen, hussy, men, much like herpes, will always come running back. Hmm, drawers are empty. Guess he took his personal items before he fled. All right, let's check his laundry. Oh, whoops. <laughs> hopefully something taught him how to, hopefully someone taught him how to wipe. Well, he raised his tail for Ed, so I'm sure his toes twinkle enough to have learned that lesson. Hmm, but then again, who wouldn't for a man like that? He's grown to be so oh, no no, we've moved beyond that, yes. No more living in the no more living in the past. Let's see now. Huh? What's this? Oh, there's a sea of crumpled paper under his desk. I'm pretty sure Et was holding a note when I walked in. <laughs> what are these? Love letters addressed to a third secret lover? I unfold one and give it a quick scan. To my loved ones, I'm sorry for disappearing without notice, but this is something that simply must be done with haste. Oh, oh. I think she's finding the, um... The suicide note that Gray left. So I'm pretty okay. I'm, I'm, I think I'm oriented now. This is a, a flashback, and uh, br to sh pretty much showing what happened at Gray's house after he left to, at, to go, you know, kind of uh, off himself before he ran into Virgil and all that. Okay. Oh dear. This is worse than I thought. He's chosen. He's chosen to abandon this mortal coil. Without paying me any recompense? Ah, oh, that scoundrel. All right, that does it. This calls for a more business-minded individual. Uh, let me go fetch him. Oops, I keep clicking off the window. Who's he gonna go fetch? Who the heck? Ah, there he is. God, I am one handsome devil. Oh, it's the same person. He just... <laughs> he just changed clothes. All right. <clears throat> Ten years ago, I'd have been flattered to become entangled in a silly love triangle. But now... Ah, I know better. I hear a mammon's words ringing through my mind. I'll always get the cash first. And it looks like a little note here appeared in my little diary. So let me go ahead and... Give that a look. Another addition to the timeline. Uh, I don't know who this added, though. Can... Oh, John. Born 1980. Jeez. So this John character was born 1980. All right. Anyway, where was I? <clears throat> the cash. Yes, the cash, Henny. Hmm. Come to think of it, I doubt that coward actually went through with the whole ordeal. I'll bet Simone is out in this mess looking for the whelp right now. If that Charles fellow really is dangerous, I can't let her run into him. My heart isn't completely made of stone. Out of these three stooges, I'll always put her first. She's clearly the ace in this deck of cards. She has the body, the talent, the personality. Oh, heavens, it really is a shame I'm a queer. <laughs> Who's this guy? I shield myself from the endless onslaught with my cape, careful to avoid stepping in the waist of the rabble. I'm going back to the bar because I want because I want to help Simone, not because of what that mutt told me. And if that sulfur swamp fellow tries to get fresh with me, well I have little old Lucy here. Right between the eyes. Hmm. Seems quieter than usual. Must have been the rain. In any case... Oh my gosh. I swing open the door to my establishment to find... Another door? What the devil? Oh... That scary music is coming back. I, I certainly don't recall having any additions made to the entrance in the last hour. Oh... Okay, no more absinthe before noon. Absinthe? Absinthe? 
No matter. I'll simply go through here and everything will be... Oof. What the heck? Okay, dark hallway. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. I don't know whose idea this little prank was, but my patience is thinning. No response. But I know some. I know someone is watching. This hallway is even drearier than the last. I refuse to see what lies beyond. Uh, the simplest solution to this game is simply not to play. Au revoir. Wow, the smartest character in any horror movie I've ever seen decides to not go down the scary alley. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, thankfully I left the other two doors open, allowing me to waltz back outside with these. Wow, what just happened? <laughs> I can tell that whoever or whatever did this is displeased. The air rumbles with discontent, and I can't help but chuckle. Ah, come now. Whatever your goal was, you have to do more than mere parlor tricks. I'm pushing it, but time is of the essence. And then a mysterious voice calling out, John, John, is that you? Oh, Simone. <laughs> I should probably just stick with that and make that her voice the whole time. Simone's voice coming from the alley around back. John, it's... it's... <laughs> no, okay. Simone's a girl. Um, John, it's Charles. He's got a gun. P please come quick. Sim? Ha! Ah, this is an obvious trap, but that's undeniably Sim's voice. Against my better judgment, I trudge into the alley. My trigger finger stays at the ready as I bash the door open with the business end of my cane. Oh, so he goes back in. I see. So it was, it was the voice that was luring him in there. All right, then. Show yourself, beast. Silence. <laughs> Come now, I'll make you into a handbag, you filthy rapscallion. Once again, this isn't my bar. This isn't anywhere. Salute. Was there another business that shared an alley with us? I know I'm getting old, but... I gently closed the door behind me. Now the only source of light left is a sickly red lamp burning in the distance. Whatever kind of place this was, it had seen better days. Tables are covered in sterile white sheets, haphazardly pushed towards the edges of the room. Ha, huh, what? Did I miss the square dancing contest? Ah, what the frack is going on here? Just gonna keep it like what? A booming deep voice sighs, the room rising and falling along with it. Uh, okay, I'm not sure whose this is, um... <clears throat> Look at here, son. It wasn't supposed to be this complicated. That's not Charles. Ah, show yourself, clown. Another sound effect. It responds with a hearty chuckle, and I almost lose my balance as the floor shakes under me. Hmm. Usually, fi usually folks just walk straight into the place without any second thoughts. Makes my life much easier. Oh, I think this is Virgil. I grip, I grip Lucy's trigger. Aha. Uh -huh. You being who, exactly? Oh, you can call me Virgil, son. It's Virgil. What is he? I'm literally starting to think Virgil's some kind of geez, demonic entity. Hmm. <clears throat> Charmed. Why don't you show yourself so we can go over this man to man? I cock Lucy loud enough that anyone in the room would notice. A portly rabbit steps out, steps out of the shadows, donning a rather kinky mask. His eyes. Well, what is this? I usually get invited to these kind of parties ahead of time. <laughs> uh. hmm. Trifling as you are, I can't help but be impressed with your intuition. So, I'll cut to the chase. I tap my feet. Faking a bravado. You're looking for Gray, correct? Uh, don't show your cards early. Oh, is that his name? More or less. If it'll get that gator off our back and keep Simone safe. Unless you'd like to pay in his stead. 
ground shaking. I hear other voices laugh along with Virgil. Crap, he's not alone. Oh, you're a fasty one. Well, as luck would have it, I can take you to him. Uh huh. You just need to walk through this here door. <sighs> You're kidding, right? At this point, I wish. Jeez, Virgil, you're freaking me out here, man. <sighs> He's starting to get annoyed. Good. Is this going to be a whole thing? Should I pack a suitcase? <sighs> No more fooling around. There's no trick. He will be past that door. Jeez. <sighs> All right. But if he's not, I'm collecting his missing rent from you. Watch out, rodents. I'm coming for your pink tail. <laughs> I'm committing fairly well to the character, I think. I can't get his voice right, though. I feel like I'm switching it up a lot, so I gotta figure out. He's definitely a posh... I don't know what gay guy sounded stereotypically in the 20s or 30s. Alrighty. So Virgil is definitely up to something. I, I can't tell if Virgil's a good guy or a bad guy yet, though. Hmm. <clears throat> Christ. He finally skedaddled. Yeah. You picked the live one, didn't you? Oh, wait. Question mark. Hmm. Another person. Ye. What's that? Scottish? You picked the live one, didn't you? Though, I, though I've got my eye on something a wee bit stranger. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds just like you. And you, pretty boy? Hmm? Oh, whatever ups the ante. I just want to have some fun. So I'll say I'll stay double or nothing. These guys are betting. What is happening here? That and that and as a roundabout way of of jeez, what the heck? That in as that and has as a roundabout way of enjoying. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> that and as a roundabout way of enjoying himself. Hmm. And you? Some other entity with a different accent? Ah, yes. The type who just wants to see how the game ends. All lovely contenders. Well then, let the games begin. Let the games begin. What the heck? Route 2? There's a second route? I... I... Oh, okay. Uh, pausing. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> Silence. And I do know what the next lines are. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like we're driving on the back of Ken's motorbike. This is actually a nice image. There's like a, there's actually a little bit of animation to this, technically. It's kinda it's kinda cute. It's just really sweet. Aww. This is cute. I like this. <laughs> Although I just noticed a tree hovering in the, in the, in the air. Anyway, all right. <clears throat> Kane's been quiet for a long time. The sounds in the distance are barely audible now. Only the oppressive hum of his engine fills the air around us. I'd look for the other two if I could peel myself off of Ken's back. Guess he didn't get the memo that I'm still a rookie when it comes to riding shotgun on a raging death machine. After that happened, it's no surprise they took off as fast as they could. It then dawns on me how tense I am, and I try to relax my muscles. Ken inhales sharply as the grip around him loosens. S sorry Hmm, he's silent. Um... I can feel a growl vibrate through his body, but I don't care. Uh, why did you have to... Why did you... Have to go so far? Still silent. I'm not saying you shouldn't defend yourself, but you already won. The cops would have... Don't. 
I choke back the rest of my words. His voice is dripping in malice. Just don't. <sighs> you didn't know jack about me yesterday, but you agreed to stick with me. Yeah, but the less you know going forward, the better. Don't start trying to... Fine, fine. Oh, that's my alarm. All right, well, uh, this is gonna... Uh, oh, sorry, don't cut it just yet. <laughs> but, um, anywho, uh, all right. Huh? Oh, I'm getting ready to wrap up now. All right, everybody. Well, that is the alarm, and I'm trying to make sure I keep this episode within the 22-minute mark and not go over, like, 30 minutes as before, even though, man, they're, Ken and Gray are probably going to have a serious talk soon. But, um... Oh, my gosh, I don't know how I feel about Ken. He's he's clearly got, like, a troubled past or something, but, uh... I, I don't know. I, I mean, that was pretty brutal to see what he did to that kid back in that, uh, that uh, parking lot there, and... I, I haven't lost my sympathy for Ken. You know, I, I clearly I've got a thing for Sundarays, but this got serious, you know? People are getting hurt. There's some demonic forces at play here. There's, man, the story's getting really complicated, so... This is going to be a good place to call it. Uh, and uh, hopefully you guys tune in for the next one. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, I guess I did forget to do this on the last one. <laughs> uh, the whole liking and subscribing thing. Thankfully, this episode was a little less intense. But, um, in the meantime, let me, uh, before I wrap up here too, let me just go ahead and plug in one more time. I am streaming on Twitch these days, so you can find me at Linen Otter. You can also, uh, keep an eye out for my other channel. If it's, if it's, if that video is already uploaded by the time I'm uploading this video, then I'll link it. If not, it might be by the time I upload the next episode of Burrows. It's going to be a new channel where I start doing video essays, reviews, and maybe some other content. We'll see. It's just that I feel like it would make more sense for it to be on a different channel. So feel free to keep an eye out for that. But thank you guys for li uh, watching, liking if you liked it, subscribing if you subscribed. And I will see you guys in the next one. You all take care. And, oh, and let me know how you like this uh, audio setup. I, I, again, I don't think this is something that I'm going to be able to do too regularly, but it was fun to experiment with. And it's given me a lot of uh, ideas of how I can improve uh, the whole presentation of, of these uh, uh, visual novel readings going forward. So yeah, any, any comments would be... Uh, totally appreciated and considered. Okay, bye for real. <laughs>